Good evening, boys and girls. Tonight's lesson is Lesson 6.4, Common Denominators. Our essential question is, how can you write a pair of fractions as fractions with a common denominator? What we're going to do is we're going to look at two fractions, and we're going to make them have the same denominator. That's our essential question. How can you write a pair of fractions as fractions with a common denominator? Let's take a look at our first example. It says Martin has two cakes that are the same size. One cake is cut into one half size pieces, while the other cake is cut into one third size pieces. How can he cut each cake? He wants to have all equal size pieces. The way we do that is that we have to look at both cakes and we want to say, well, I want them to have the same size of pieces. Right now they don't. This one has two parts. This one has three parts. We need to find a common denominator so they have equal size pieces. So the way we do that is we find a common denominator. So what we do is we're going to find our multiples of each of my denominators. So let's look at one third and I want to list my multiples of my denominator. My denominator is 3, 6, 9, 12, and I'll stop at 15. Now let's list my multiples of 1 half. I have 2, 4, 6. I can stop right there because right away I see 6 as my common denominator. Now all we have to do is make them both have equivalent fractions with the denominator of 6. 1 third equals how many 6? If you said 2 6, you are correct because remember 1 third times 2 halves equals 2 6. 1 times 2 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6. Now let's talk about 1 half. 1 half equals how many 6? Well, I have 2 times 3 is 6, so 1 times 3 is 3. So 1 half is 3 6. It's the same amount. So what that tells me is I'm going to make both of these cakes cut into 6. There they are. Are those equal size pieces? Yes, they are. And now I can look at my thirds. One third I'm going to shade in. There's my one third. And one third equals two six. And now let's look at my one half. My one half equals three six. Those are all same size pieces. I could tell right away that one half, I'll shade in my one half, which also equals three six, is greater than one third, one part out of three parts. Okay, so I can see that they now have a common denominator. One third equals two six and one half equals three six. So remember, you can use common multiples to find a common denominator. Step one, list your multiples of each denominator. And then step two, a common multiple can be used as a common denominator. So let's look at four fifths and one half. I want to make them have the same denominator because right now I see that this has a denominator of 5 and 1 half has a denominator of 2. So we want to find equivalent fractions where they both have the same denominator. So let's list our multiples of 5 for 4 fifths, 5, 10, 15, and 20. And let's start listing our multiples of 2 for 1 half until you reach one that's common. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Right away I see they both have a common multiple of 10, therefore my common denominator can be 10. 1 half has the same value as 5 tenths, and 4 fifths has the same value as 8 tenths. How did I get that? Because 5 times 2 is 10, so 4 times 2 is 8. And down here, 1 half is the same as 5 tenths. 2 times 5 is 10, so 1 times 5 is 5. So my common multiple was 10, and they both have a common denominator of 10. 
4 fifths equals 8 tenths, and 1 half equals 5 tenths. So let's take a look at 3 fourths and 5 eighths. I see that my denominators are different. This one has 4, this one has 8. Let's find one that's common. So I'm going to list my multiples of 4. I'm going to say 4, 8, 12, 16. Now let's list our multiples of 8. Ready? 8. I can stop right away. You always want to find the least common multiple whenever you find equivalent fractions. I mean, I could keep going and say 16 as well, and that would be true. They'd have a common denominator, but I always like to go with the smallest. All right, so now we have 3 fourths will equal how many eighths? Well, I know 4 times 2 is 8, so 3 times 2 is 6. 3 fourths equals 6 eighths. And now let's look at 5 eighths. 5 eighths, my denominator is already 8, so I'm done. 6 eighths, 5 eighths. They both have the same denominator. I met my goal. My goal was to find a common denominator, and I did. So let's write the pair of fractions here as a pair of fractions with a common denominator. I see I have one third, and I see that I have one fourth. My denominators are three and four. They're not common yet. That means we have to make them alike. So I'm going to look at one third, and I want to find my multiples. Three, six, nine, and twelve. I'm going to stop there because I'm thinking in my head that if I listed my multiples of 4, I know I'd eventually get to 12. I'm just pre-planning here. 4, 8, 12. I found common multiples. Therefore, I can find equivalent fractions with denominators of 12. 1 fourth equals how many twelfths? Well, like we learned in class last week, 1 fourth, I would have to times it by 3 thirds would equal 3 twelfths because 4 times 3 is 12 and 1 times 3 is 3. Do you remember doing that last week? And now let's look at 1 third. 1 third times, I'm going to mul multiply it by 4 fourths because 3 times 4 is 12, so 1 times 4 is 4. So do they have common denominators now? Yes, they do. I have 12 and they both have equivalent fractions. 1 fourth equals the same thing as 3 twelfths. 1 third equals the same thing as 4 twelfths. I found common denominators. Let's just do one more to be very good at this. 1 half and 1 fourth. What could be a common denominator? If you want to try this one on your own and pause it, you can, or you can just do it along with me again. We have 1 half and we have 1 fourth. Step one, list your multiples of your denominators. I'm going to start with two. Two, four, six, eight. Now let's list our multiples of four because I see that four is my other denominator I'm going to try to find a common denominator with. So my multiples of four are four, eight. You know what? I can stop right away. I can either choose eight or I can choose four. I like to choose the smallest one. One half equals how many fourths? If you said two fourths, you were correct. Now, do I have to do anything with my one fourth? No, I don't. And that's why I like to find the least common denominator because a lot of times it might show up to be the same one right here and you have less work to do. So I now have a common denominator. One half equals two fourths and one fourth remains the same. Therefore, they're common. So here are your three homework questions. Now, if you're not quite sure how to find common denominators, we will be having practice tomorrow in class, but you can go back and watch this video again before you attempt these three questions if you're just not sure. Question number one says, Kevin practiced his trumpet two-thirds of an hour on Tuesday and three-fourths of an hour on Thursday. Which number below is a common denominator for two-thirds and three-fourths? Question number two is a hot question. It says, Jonas says a common denominator for three-fourths and two-fifths two is nine. What is Jonah's error? 
Okay, so I want you to explain that in your words. And the last one on this hot pink box, it says tell whether the fractions are equivalent. Write equal to or not equal to. Is one half equal to four eighths or is it not equal to four eighths? So boys and girls, you know the routine. I want you to assess yourself. Be honest and truthful. If you do not understand this, please put down that you're level one and novice. If you really understand it, put down that you're an expert level four. If you're in between, you choose between two and three. Again, here are your three questions I want you to try, and we will look at them tomorrow and discuss them and do more practice. Have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.